Traditionally, there are three main ways to cultivate cannabis, soil, cocoa, and hydroponic. The main difference between these three are very subtle, but they do play a big part in the outcome of your cannabis plant. Soil, which most people will argue is their favorite or the best, is because it's natural and there's microbes in soil that the other two just don't have. One of the biggest pros of soil is that it does contain natural nutrients. And because of a lot of the microbes that are living inside of that soil, it's able to help new growers out who may make some mistakes with pH. Cocoa and hydroponics, on the other hand, are extremely different from soil in one major way. They are what we call inert medias, meaning that they don't have nutrients and that you have to add your own. One of the major benefits of cocoa and hydroponics, however, is that it can be set in a range and almost forgotten and automated. This is one of the big trade-offs when it comes to choosing between these three techniques. A lot of growers will choose soil because it does have natural living organisms in it and it does contain nutrients. Other growers who choose cocoa and hydroponics, however, sometimes like to be able to automate their grow, set it, and forget it. One important thing to note during the vegetation stage is that this is when training techniques can be employed. Cannabis naturally grows in a Christmas tree shape, pretty vertical and doesn't get very horizontal. When cultivating cannabis to increase its yield, it's very important to control the shape of the plant. This is when training techniques come in. There's two main types of training, low stress training and high stress training. Some of the major differences between low stress training and high stress training is that low stress training can be used throughout the entire life cycle of the plant whereas high stress training can only be done during the vegetative life cycle. High stress training causes wounds to the plant, like trimming, topping, or actually femming. We won't talk about that acronym. These techniques actually damage the plant, and if they're done during the flowering, those parts won't regenerate like they do during flowering. This is why it's important to consider the difference between low stress training and high stress training during these life cycles of the plant. You might ask yourself, if cannabis grows naturally in a Christmas tree shape, what's the point of doing all of this? Well, ask any indoor grower and they'll tell you. The canopy needs to be even or else they're spending money on light that's just hitting the floor. When you go into the best grow facilities, it literally looks like what it's called, a screen of green or a sea of green. That even canopy ensures that the plant can develop at all parts evenly. This ensures that the final product is as even throughout as possible as opposed to a Christmas tree shaped plant where the lower buds don't receive the same type of lighting as the buds that are at the top of the plant. It is important during the flowering phase that the humidity is monitored carefully. This is because if left out of check, mold and mildew can grow in the buds. This can ruin an entire crop or even an entire facility if left unchecked and spread. These are buds that you do not want to ingest. There is no coming back from mold and mildew. These products must be disposed of, and for that reason, it's extremely important to identify them or just keep your environment in check so that you can prevent it all together. Always remember, the best way to avoid mold and mildew is to prevent it in the first place. Once a grower is determined that they're ready to harvest their plant, they flush their plant. Most growers would say that they would actually cut their plant down and go directly into dry trimming. But one thing that's extremely to note is there are two different ways to trim a plant. While most growers will tell you that you must dry your plant before you trim it, there's actually a method called wet trimming as well. While wet trimming is pretty messy because you're dealing with sticky buds still full of moisture, a lot of people say that it takes a lot less time. While drying the plant on the other time not only starts getting into the process of decarboxylation, but also the leaves are easier to remove around the actual buds without accidentally clipping off some of your yield. The final process of harvest is curing. The reason curing is so important is because live cannabis plants produce cannabinoid acids, which are different than the cannabinoids in their neutral forms that we're familiar with. During the curing process, the plant is actually allowed to break down its chlorophyll, becoming more of a clean and a smoother burn inside the bud, while at the same time, naturally decarboxylating these cannabinoid acids. 